Hey everyone, as we continue our 21 days of prayer, I thought I would uh, show you how to pray evening prayer at home and pray along with you. To begin, uh, get your Book of Common Prayer or follow along online at BCP Online or use the Mission St. Clair app. Get your Bible and mark tonight's readings. So that will be Psalm 94 and um, 1 Corinthians 11, 17 through 34. All right, let's get started. Turn in your Book of Common Prayer to page 61. To begin, I like to take a deep breath and read one of the sentences of Scripture. I will bless the Lord who giveth me counsel. My heart teacheth me night after night. I have set the Lord always before me. Because he is at my right hand, I shall not fall. I'm going to go directly into the confession of sin. Dear friends in Christ, here in the presence of Almighty God, let us kneel in silence and with penitent and obedient hearts confess our sins so that we may obtain forgiveness by his infinite goodness and mercy. Almighty and merciful Father, we have erred and strayed from thy ways like lost sheep. We have followed too much the devices and desires of our own hearts. We have offended against thy holy laws. We have left undone those things which we ought to have done, and we have done those things which we ought not to have done. But thou, O Lord, have mercy upon us. Spare thou those who confess their faults. Restore thou those who are penitent, according to thy promises declared unto mankind in Christ Jesus our Lord. And grant, O merciful Father, for his sake, that we may hereafter live a godly, righteous, and sober life to the glory of thy holy name. Amen. The Almighty and merciful Lord, grant us absolution and remission of all our sins, true repentance, amendment of life, and the grace and consolation of his Holy Spirit. Amen. Turning to page 64, you may sing or say, O gracious light. O gracious light, pure brightness of the ever-living Father in heaven. O Jesus Christ, holy and blessed. Now as we come to the setting of the sun and our eyes behold the vesper light, we sing thy praises, O God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Thou art worthy at all times to be praised by happy voices. O Son of God, O giver of life, to be glorified through all the worlds. And then we'll begin the readings by turning to the psalm. In your Book of Common Prayer, you can find Psalm 94 on page 722. O Lord God of vengeance, O God of vengeance, show yourself. Rise up, O judge of the world. Give the arrogant their just deserts. How long shall the wicked, O Lord, how long shall the wicked triumph? They bluster in their insolence. All the evildoers are full of boasting. They crush your people, O Lord, and afflict your nation. They murder the widow and the stranger and put the orphans to death. Yet they say, the Lord does not see. The God of Jacob takes no notice. Consider well, you dullards among the people. When will you fools understand? He that planted the ear, does he not hear? He that formed the eye, does he not see? He who admonishes the nations, will he not be punished? Will he not punish? He who teaches all the world, has he no knowledge? The Lord knows our human thoughts, how like a puff of wind they are. Happy are they whom you instruct, O Lord, whom you teach out of your law, to give them rest in evil days until a pit is dug for the wicked. For the Lord will not abandon his people, nor will he forsake his own. For judgment will again be just, and all the true of heart will follow it. Who rose up for me against the wicked? Who took my part against the evildoers? If the Lord had not come to my help, I should have soon dwelt in the land of silence. 
As often as I said, my foot has slipped. Your love, O oh Lord, upheld me. When many cares fill my mind, your consolations cheer my soul. Can a corrupt tribunal have any part with you, one which frames evil into law? They conspire against the life of the just and condemn the innocent to death. But the Lord has been my stronghold and my God, the rock of my trust. He will turn their wickedness back upon them and destroy them in their own malice. The Lord our God will destroy them. Turning back to page 64, after every psalm reading, say the Gloria Patri. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. A reading from Corinthians. Now in the following instructions, I do not commend you, because when you come together, it is not for the better, but for the worse. For to begin with, when you come together as a church, I hear that there are divisions among you, and to some extent, I believe it. Indeed, there have to be factions among you, for only so will it become clear who among you are genuine. When you come together, it is not really to eat the Lord's Supper. For when the time comes to eat, each of you goes ahead with your own supper, and one goes hungry, and another becomes drunk. What? Do you not have homes to eat and drink in? Or do you show contempt for the church of God and humiliate those who have nothing? What should I say to you? Should I commend you? In this matter, I do not, con I do not commend you. For I received from the Lord what I also handed on to you. The Lord Jesus, on the night when he was betrayed, took a loaf of bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body that is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, he took the cup also, after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink the cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Whoever, therefore, eats the bread or drinks the cup of the Lord in an unworthy manner will be answerable for the body and the blood of the Lord. Examine yourselves, and only then eat of the bread and drink of the cup. For all who eat and drink, without discerning the body, eat and drink judgment against themselves. For this reason, many of you are weak and ill, and some have died. But if we judged ourselves, we would not be judged. But when we are judged by the Lord, we are disciplined, so that we may not be condemned along with the world. So then, my brothers and sisters, when you come together to eat, wait for one another. If you are hungry, eat at home, so that when you come together, it will not be for your condemnation. About the other things, I will give you instructions when I come. This reading from Paul's first letter to the Corinthians identifies a specific pastoral problem in the Corinthian church. Paul offers a solution and then continues on to praise God. The problem he identifies is that Christians in Corinth are not taking part in the Lord's Supper with self-examination. And this is revealing an economic divide in the Corinthian community. He's seeing and hearing reports that some of the Christians in Corinth are eating, um, eating as, as if this is a banquet. Um, at that time, the Lord's Supper was a full meal. So he writes that some of them are eating without reverence and without regard that what they are treating like a banquet might be someone's only meal and a meal of survival and sustenance. And this is, this is strange to read in a time when we're not able to gather for communion. So to the believers in Corinth and believers throughout Christian history and today, 
Paul recommends self-examination and reflection. Paul encourages that we look at everything the Christian community does, together or separately, as fulfilling the love of God and the love of neighbor. Something else that stands out to me about today's readings is that um, is the goodness of God's judgment. Uh, we can hear the we can hear the word judgment um, really fearfully, and um, particularly worldly judgment as meant to tear us down rather than build us up. To um, name us by our faults rather than beloved of God. So particularly in verse 32, I'm enjoying reading that God's judgment is not about condemnation, but about restoring us, both in God's love and to community with others. And um, as you continue in your home devotions, prayer and reflections, and thinking about what it means to be the church, to love God and to love your neighbor, I'm finding um, Paul's idea of the body of Christ and his vision for that as particularly compelling when we reflect on our bodies as um, sites of help or disease or potential or potential for disease. I think anyone who has cared for aging relatives has a lot to teach us about this kind of interdependence on each other. Um, so as we anticipate gathering again for communion, when we think about what the Lord's Supper has meant to us. Let's continue in reflection about what it means to be the body of Christ and all the ways that we experience that. I'm also thinking of Verse 26, for as often as you eat this bread and drink the cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. And I think as we are reflecting on what it means for our spiritual lives to not gather for communion, I think the challenge now is to find and enjoy all the other ways in which we proclaim the Lord's death and resurrection. Amen. You can also use that time for conversation, journaling, whatever fits your speed. Turning to page 65, let us read together the Magnificat. You can also look up um, choral versions of Mary's song in response to God. Uh, one praise song version that I particularly like Lila Meadows sang it for a college worship service, night prayer, is um, Holy is Your Name. So you can either look up one of those versions or um, read it silently or out loud. Page 65. My soul doth magnify the Lord, and my spirit hath rejoiced in God my Savior. For he hath regarded the lowliness of his handmaiden. For behold, from henceforth, all generations shall call me blessed. For he that, have, that is mighty hath magnified me, and holy is his name. His mercy is on them that fear him throughout all generations. He hath showed strength with his arm. He hath scattered the proud in the imagination of their hearts. He hath put down the mighty from their seat, and hath exalted the humble and the meek. He has filled the hungry with good things, and the rich he has sent away empty. He, remembering his mercy, hath hope in his servant Israel, as he promised to our forefathers, Abraham and his seed forever. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Continue then to, Apostles, to the Apostles' Creed on page 66. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. 
he descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. And then as you continue, um, pick a few of the collects to read, ones that, um, ones that strike your heart or ones for a particular day. Collect for peace. O oh God, from whom all desires, all good counsels, and all just works do proceed, give unto thy servants that peace which the world cannot give, that our hearts may be set to obey thy commandments, and also that by thee, we, being defended from the fear of all enemies, may pass our time in rest and quietness through the merits of Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. And then add one of these prayers for mission. Keep watch, dear Lord, with those who work or watch or weep this night, and give thine angels charge over those who sleep. Tend the sick, Lord Christ. Give rest to the weary. Bless the dying. Soothe the suffering. Pity the afflicted. Shield the joyous. And all for thy love's sake. Amen. And then this is a time for um, offering to God whatever intercessions may be on your heart. You can also pray along with the Holy Trinity prayer list in your weekly email. I'm thinking of all those who are sick, suffering, and fearful, for those who are lonely, for those who are anxious, um, but also for those who are, who feel crowded, who are not able to um, set down their burdens and worries, and for all working through the night and for all worrying through the night. And then to close, uh, let's read the general thanksgiving. Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we, thine unworthy servants, do give thee most humble and hearty thanks for all thy goodness and loving kindness to us and to all men. We bless thee for our cre creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life but above all for thine inestimable love and the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ, for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. And we beseech thee, give us that due sense of all thy mercies, that our hearts may be unfeignedly thankful, and that we show forth thy praise, not only with our lips, but in our lives, by giving up ourselves to thy service and by walking before thee in holiness and righteousness all our days. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with thee and the Holy Ghost be all honor and glory, world without end. Amen. Concluding on page 72. Let us bless the Lord. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Ghost be with us all evermore. Amen.